What's up, y'all? All right, I'm back. I've been gone for like two weeks, and I'm sorry about that. I've just been slipping, been busy, and adjusting to working from home full time. And I got a new puppy. Okay, don't don't act like you don't like me. His name's Kobe, and he's two months old today. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some things you should know before you travel to Bali. I've been living in Bali for three months now and I kind of know the ins and outs of Bali. I'm still learning, but I'm going to help you guys learn from my mistakes and tell you some things you should know before you arrive. First thing is visa and vaccinations. So if you're from 140 specific countries, you can arrive to Bali and then receive your visa once you get to the airport. That's going to cost you 35 US dollars and you can extend it after your 30 days is up. So to extend it, you would have to leave Bali or Indonesia altogether and then return back to Bali. And the best flights to catch are to Singapore, Bangkok, or Manila. And all three of these destinations are usually under $150 round trip. So I recommend doing one of those destinations and then paying the $35 again once you arrive. The other option is to do a free visa at your local embassy and you cannot extend that one. That's the only thing about the free visa. And I do not suggest you get a free visa unless you live near an embassy and you don't plan on staying past 30 days. Otherwise, you're spending about the same amount to send your passport to the embassy and back, or um, you're not gonna be able to extend it if you stay longer than one month. So I recommend the visa on arrival. Um, for vaccinations, I highly recommend getting the yellow fever immunization. And I also recommend, I think it's typhoid and hepatitis C. I think that's it, but I'll put it here in the video if that's wrong. Second thing is neighborhoods. You should really research the neighborhoods before you decide where you want to stay. Whatever hotel you book, whatever Airbnb you get, make sure you know what you want to do so that you're close and in the vicinity of that neighborhood. So for example, if you're coming as a digital nomad, you probably want to stay in Changu because they have reliable internet, there's a lot of co-working spaces, there's a lot of other digital nomads that you can network with, and there's just a lot more um, extracurricular things you could do after you work, such as surfing, go to cafes, and there's yoga studios too. It's really for that focused person who wants to work remotely. Um, there's Dimpasar, which is the capital and probably where you arrive um, via the airport, and this is more of like a local um, business, local business, type of city. It's not as eventful as the other places in Bali. However, it is more of a realistic view of the Balinese way of life. And then you have realistic prices too. So everything is affordable in Denpasar. Um, the next neighborhood is Kuta. And that is more of the young, wild and free crowd. Um, I like to describe it as the Las Vegas of Bali because people do not sleep in Kuta. And you'll find a sky garden there where um, a lot of people like to hang out and party and then you'll find tons of shopping there and it's just a nice place for young people to hang out. So if you're not into the loud and kind of rowdy crowd, I would not suggest Kuta. However, if you're looking for a good time and to meet new people and to party, Kuta is the place for you. And there's also some good surfing in Kuta. Next neighborhood is Ubud. If you're looking to be in an artistic space, creative space, and if you want to do yoga quite frequently, then I would highly suggest Ubud. Ubud is probably what you've seen on most Instagram accounts because you'll find the monkey forest there, the Bali swings there, the elephant sanctuaries there. So if you're interested in doing those things, you definitely want to book your hotel or Airbnb in Ubud. And then the last neighborhood I want to describe is Sonor, which is for an older crowd, I would say, because it's more family friendly. And you still have the great things you would want if you came to Bali, such as the beach, nice restaurants, hotels, resorts, and good shopping. But it's definitely a slower pace and it's just a lot more peaceful. Third thing is scooters. If you want to ride a scooter in Bali, please have some type of experience because driving here is insane. I'm serious, driving here can be a good thing 
and go completely smooth or it can be a disaster. People here drive just based off of respect. So there is traffic laws, but I mean, no one's really enforcing them and no one really is doing everything by the book. So um, have some type of like experience riding a scooter. Otherwise, do not start here in Bali. Um, and you can use an international license or a Balinese driving license. Definitely always, always, always wear a helmet. That is the number one thing you'll get pulled over for if you are driving a scooter. So always wear a helmet. If you are not comfortable driving a scooter, then you can download Gojek or Grab. This is the Bali Uber, um, what's the other one called? You know what I'm talking about. And you can get a car, you can get a scooter, you can get a taxi, and you can even order a massage and food on there. So download that app regardless and you'll thank me later. We also drive on the opposite side of the road. So similar to the UK, the driver is on the right side and the passenger's on the left. And then of course you drive according to traffic. Fourth thing I want to mention is the weather. So this is huge when it comes to deciding when you're coming to Bali. So from October to April is rainy season. And from April back to October or September, is dry season. So during rainy season, it can rain quite sporadically. So when it rains, it's like pouring. It's not just like a little sprinkle, it actually pours. And it could last anywhere between like 30 minutes to like four or five, six hours the whole day. So if you're coming during rainy season, then I highly suggest that you plan loosely and you plan things that may be inside so that you're not really affected by the rain or you plan um, things that are not at a scheduled time and that you can just kind of do whenever you feel like because the rain might really throw a, a stick in your plans. But if you come during the dry season, you should have no problems, but there might be a little bit more people visiting Bali at the time. And then the last thing I want to mention is the biggest medical problem people have when they come to Bali and that is Bali belly. And that is pretty much like I guess traveler's diarrhea um, because of something that you have eaten here. And I highly suggest that you ask your doctor to prescribe you some traveler's diarrhea medication before you come here. Otherwise, you can visit something called Kamiya Pharmacy that we have here in Bali. And that is the most common pharmacy that I've seen. And you should be able to find one without a problem. But there's also Guardian Pharmacy in mostly tourist areas, but Guardian Pharmacy can be quite expensive compared to Kamiya. So yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so I think those are like the most important things you need to know before you come to Bali. Um, where to stay, how to decide where to stay, um, and just where to find medications for any and every situation. And your visa situation, you can easily come to Bali and enjoy yourself. And I hope these tips really will help you in your planning process. And I know that I know that I know that you'll have an amazing time. If you're here on the island, give me a shout and maybe I'll have a tip or two for you. And let me know guys if you want me to make a video about some of my favorite places here in Bali. I'm starting to learn the ins and outs. And I might make another one of these videos as time goes on and I learn some more things about this awesome place. Watch some of my vlogs and check out my website here. Follow me on Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be more consistent, I promise. And yeah, thank you so much for watching my video. Comment down below. Um, one of the tips that you found the most useful and maybe I'll make a longer video about that. Or when it comes to living here, maybe I can make a separate video about that. But I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye. So we're doing a test because I'm not gonna record this video another time. I don't even remember what I said the first time.